We are through the first 13 games of the tournament, and now we only have five teams left. Hello, everybody. Welcome on into Saplizio Field. He's Richie Casalino. I'm Troy Lynch, wrapping up day number four of the 2019 Alpine Bank Junior College World Series. And today, we just saw one of the games that it was the winner's bracket. There are only right. three undefeated teams coming into this game. Well, now there are only two. That's right. Central Arizona and Iowa Western. Iowa Western, the team that only played one game up until day four, which was tonight, had a pretty easy schedule going into it. Yeah. But they're hit, also hitting like crazy. 18 runs in their first game. On the other side of the coin, Central Arizona, incredible pitching. Mm -hmm. Two games really led by their starters. That was not the case tonight. Here are the first half of the game for your highlights. Game number 13 of the Juco World Series, and we only have two teams left in the winner's bracket. Soon to be fewer after tonight. Iowa Western and Central Arizona fireworks just three pitches in. The Vaqueros, Liam Spence, why not lead off the night with a home run? Reavers left fielder thinking he has a play on it, but it just sneaks over. Nice little selly. It's one nothing. Iowa Western's Cooper Bowman thinking anything you can do, I can do better. Also the leadoff hitter and also a home run. You don't see that often. Chalk one up for Iowa Western. Only difference is they kept the bats warm after that. Same inning, number 22, Ronald Sweeney the third, looking for his second RBI of the tournament. Single up the middle, no throw there. Caleb Ballgard trots home. Reavers looking strong. Moving to the second now. Here's the thing Central Arizona's done so well to avoid making mistakes. A simple throw to home to get the force turns into an error. Catcher Jake Meyer can't corral it. Two more runs score for Iowa Western. They take an 8-1 to one lead after the third. Yeah, and they would only pile it on from there. Iowa Western, 14-4, to your final score all over Central Arizona in six innings. We thought this game might end after five. I right. mean, Central Arizona was hanging on by a thread for most of it, but at a certain point, the scales had to tip. So The Vaqueros pitching, it was fantastic through the first two games. Yeah. They only gave up a max four runs. However, they gave up 12 in the first four innings yeah. against the really fresh Iowa Western team. And the Reavers, they look really good through two games. And they're not out of it yet, though. you got to remember, Central Arizona right. just falls to the loser's bracket. There were a couple teams, though, that were eliminated today. That's right. Yeah, no, and one of those was a pretty big uh, game against Navarro and Cali. Navarro, they are fresh off a walk-off loss that they had against Walter State on Memorial Day. And, you know, Cali, they are... They also lost to Walter State, but that was on the first day. Yeah. They won their next two after that. So both these teams really looking to stay in the tournament. However, only one could. Let's check out the highlights. Second elimination game of the day, Cali. They're doing anything to get pumped up. They're taking on Navarro, who got walked off on just last night. Bottom of the second, Bulldogs up 1-0, but Cali, they know how to score runs. Corbin Lill with a big bat nearly sends it over the fence. And the runner on first, he scores with plenty of time. We're tied at one after the triple. Next batter is Logan Seamstra. Doesn't get much, but he gets the run in the score. The Tigers, they go up 2-1, and that was their 50th run of the tournament. Navarro getting antsy in the third, though. Time to let the dogs out. The man with two first names, Stacy Bailey, puts Navarro back on top with this two RBI single. Now it's three to two. And the hot dog is loaded for Dawson Woods. Put some extra mustard on that one. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Uh, it doesn't matter, because that's a grand salami. The Bulldogs end Cowley's season with a 16 to five win in only five innings. You go 47 and 14, I mean, that's a good year. You got to end it somewhere, and here's the best place to end it. And you're disappointed, but you know what? You look back in a couple of weeks, and those guys, they, they, they did what they had to do. They, they got better. They, you know, they improved, and it just wasn't good enough today. We were able to capitalize on some things and, and take advantage of big opportunities, and, and uh, I just can't say enough. Uh, you know, after a, a definitely emotional loss last night, the way these guys responded, I'm so proud as a coach. Well, they responded with a big 11-run win. The Bulldogs, they're going to advance, and they're going to play Thursday at 7.30. And we don't know who their opponent is yet, but things are looking good for the Bulldogs. However, Cowley, that team, they're going to have to head home. And they weren't yep. the only elimination game of the day. Yeah, Connor State versus Chattahoochee Valley. The team from Texas, the team from Oklahoma, excuse me, rather right. than the team from Alabama. Neither of these teams had a national title yet in their school history, so they're fighting for a spot. Chattahoochee Valley, no wins in last year's tournament. Connor State wasn't even here last year. Both teams hungry. Here are the highlights of that one. Mike Christ has got a So post. what movie genre do you like? Pirates or Cowboys? Cowboys fans, well, they're going to like this. Jake Womack smacks one over the fence and ties the game up at one run apiece. 
The Pirates pitcher Zach Cable, he wouldn't let that get to him as he strikes out Mike Coletta. Cable ended up with seven strikeouts on the day, and he would get more than a little help from his friends as Davis Schwartz hits it to short center. That'll be an RBI as Jojo Otachowski comes in to score. Pirates not done. Later in the fourth, Andrew Greckel hits one to right, and that'll help Davis Schwartz keep the big wheel turn, and he touches home safely, starting to look comfortable with the Chattahoochee Valley. Check out this solo home run by Jason Rooks. At the end of the seventh, Pirates were up 6-1, to one, but of course, no lead is safe as Connor State looks to answer. Back in the eighth as Mike Coletta hits it out to center right, scores two, and in the ninth it's a two-run game. One out looks like game is over, but oh, a throwing error makes it a one-run game. Two outs and Pirates pitcher Kate Evans he gets this strikeout to end the game. Chattahoochee Valley hangs on to beat Connor State 6-5. to five. Coach Vic says Zach Cable's pitching was huge. Outstanding. I can't, I can't say enough about what he did, you know. Uh, one, his stamina being out there, you know, and that's a lot of credit to him, to the hard work he's been doing, you know. Even though we wasn't getting the innings, uh, he, he still stayed to his plan. He, he kept working, and this is he got to reap the benefits of that today. I have a lot of answers, but I, I don't have answers this place. Uh, uh, kind of haunts me a little bit, maybe. But, uh, <laughs> whoo, sad for my guys. This this has uh, been a good group, and uh, we uh, we – we played our tails off today. You've got to feel for head coach Barry Keith. There is 34th year right. as head coach. No national titles yet, but he obviously cares a lot about his team. Connor State, though, 48 wins on the season. That's nothing to hang your head at. As we said, Ch Chattahoochee Valley, now really in the last five teams of the tournament, they really have a legitimate shot here to go far and redeem themselves from last year's blunder. Absolutely. They were the first team eliminated from last year, and then they had a 20-run first game. And then after that, then they only put up two runs, but then, of course, they battle back. So it's been yeah, a roller coaster yeah, for Chattahoochee. Say, a of a That's right. But the roller coaster, it's going to continue into tomorrow. <laughs> At 3 p.m., they're going to be taking on the Vaqueros, the Pirates and the Vaqueros. What a matchup. I'd like to see that in real life. It's going to be fun because we only have two games this, like a day now. Right. We're coming into prime time. No morning games. Hopefully the crowd gets a little bit louder, a little bit larger as we hit to a – I mean, it's only 10, 20 right now. Right. We ended early. We in, ended early in today. It was, the Zuko, it was a, Zuko World Series. So. That's right. So only two undefeated teams yeah. remain, five total left in the tournament. The two undefeated teams, they're going to play tomorrow night at 730 between Walter State and Iowa Western, two of the hottest teams in the country. That's a top 10 matchup. And, boy, is that going to be a lot of fun yeah. to watch. I mean, offense has been the name of the game in this tournament. Pitching gets you far, but as we saw with Central Arizona, sometimes the bats work out just as well. So. Right. Too bad for them, Iowa Western. They have both the bats and the arms to, in order to yeah, win. Right. So Walter State against the Reavers, that's going to be a lot of fun. we got to talk about right. a number one team in the nation that's local right here, that's right. the CMU Mavericks. They're going to be heading to the NCAA Division II College World Series on June 1st. And their first-round opponent is the eighth seed going into the tournament. New York Institute of Technology, of course, the powerhouse. <laughs> NYIT, the East Coast team. Hey, we actually caught up with the team today at practice a day before they shipped out to the East Coast. We actually talked to Will Dixon, the closer, after he got mobbed following that 3-2 win over Angelo State. I was at the very bottom. I was trying so hard to stay stay upright, and then, you know, I think somebody just stepped on my cleat, and I went up. Here we go, and I just just right down. So I was at the very bottom. I think we're better prepared for this overall in terms of the we've been there. We know the environment. We know how it plays. Our job as coaches is to make sure our players who haven't been there understand it. And we've talked about it really since the beginning of the year because it's the goal. We know every team here is going to be good. We know what it takes to get here. It's very tough, especially sending a team like Angelo State home. Like They probably deserve to be there just as much as we do. So we honestly take it game by game, and it's going to be tough to beat us twice. <laughs> Yeah, CMU, uh, really tough to beat once, let alone right. twice. By the way, <laughs> one win, if CMU wins one time, they will break their school record for wins in uh, NCAA CMU Mavs history. So that should be fun to watch. June 1st, Cary, North Carolina. We'll keep you updated until then. At this point, we got to go. Lights are about to shut off. We'll be back with more. Troy Lutrich, Cozzolino, thanks for joining us. We'll be right back.